again, leading straight on from our previous um, tutorial that we were talking about, I just want to briefly talk about some of the settings that you can use to help you control the quality of your rendering. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up over here to render setup. Just wait for that to open. There we go. And normally we'd start in our common tab here. We've got indirect illumination. So the first thing to talk about here is our final gather precision. Okay. Now you can keep this on low all the time, and it's you know it's okay, it's not bad. Or we can move this up to medium or high. I'd avoid very high. Uh, and most of the time, if I wanted to up the quality, I'd probably just go to medium. But you know, do bear in mind that this is also going to increase your render time a little bit. But what it's going to do is it's going to give you a much more accurate final gather, regather map. Okay, so that's one thing that we can look at uh, for changing um, the, the, the basic quality here. Just underneath these precision presets, we've got a drop down here. Um, we've got two options here. We've got one for camera position, best for stills, and also one for project paths from positions along the camera path. So that's really if we're, we're animating, we're moving the camera through a scene. Uh, we, can, we would obviously change to use this. If we just had a still image, as I have got, um, we're just going to stay with best for stills. So depending on whether you're using animating or stills, you can pick one of these two options. The divide camera path by number of segments, really, if I was to turn that on to, to that, that's how many camera paths, how many segments we could divide the camera path into. So we don't really need to worry about that too much if we're just doing stills. Initial final gather point density. Uh, what that will do is that will make the final gather points more dense, so more of them, more tightly packed. It will make your final gather regathering more accurate. Again, bump your time up a little bit, but not too much. Um, but yeah, that's a useful one to use there as well. The raise per final gather point will again increase the accuracy and hence the quality of your final gather, making it less noisy. Okay, so this is the one, if you've done everything else, uh, even your shadows, uh, and you're still getting a noisy render, try increasing that number. Uh, I would start with doubling it, then going to 750, then to 1000. Uh, obviously, by increasing the number of rays in the final gather point, especially per final gather point, especially if you've increased the point density as well, you are going to be looking at upping your render time here by quite a considerable amount. So do be careful with what you're playing with with these settings. Conversely, you could just mush things out a little bit just by turning up the number of interpolate over number of final gather points. Really what that does is that's like a size of filter, really. Um, and you can sort of just get that fill to be, to be a little bit larger as opposed to adding more final gather points in. So you've kind of got two ways of working here. You can either increase the point density or the number of rays per final gather point, or you can just blur it all a little bit more by increasing the number of um, final gather points overall. The number of diffuse bounces, as we've mentioned before quite, quite a bit, is the number of bounces that are going to happen when we do a regathering. Okay. So you could make that one or two, never go further than three. Three is the maximum you're ever going to want to do. And um, really that's going to give you about as good, or as good as a result as you're ever going to get. Anything more than that and it's really not worth your time or effort. The weight that you can see here, this is uh, a setting which will allow you to control how many of the diffuse bounces in your scene are used in order to help the final gather regathering process. Um, to be honest with you, you want all of them, so we set it to one. Don't don't turn it off. It's a bad idea. It really is a bad idea. Um, but yeah, I'd leave that at one if I were you. The advanced section we're not going to talk about in this, uh, really mainly because it is more advanced than where we are from just this introduction settings. Um, really, we've but just to skim over it, we've got options here for setting the noise reduction as to how we're going to do things. Obviously, the higher you go more or um, longer time it's going to take. Um, never have draft mode turned on. Then we've got the trace depth and the maximum reflections and refractions. Again, this is to do with caustic, so be careful of using any of that. Um, and further on beyond that, we've got our global illumination settings. Controlling the quality here, average number of global illumination photons per light, you might want to put that up to 200,000. 
the decay, this one be very careful with. It's a little bit like brain surgery with a mallet. Um, if you go down below 0.85, you're going to blow out your seam completely. And I'd only ever touch that and go down as a, as a lower value than that. Um, if I really had a very dark scene and I was having problems controlling it with uh, any of my exposure control settings, because what that will do is that gives the photons in the scene a longer life, hence they will bounce around the scene for longer, hence the scene will be brighter, but will also be washed out. So you, you've got sort of this, this follow-on um, problems that will happen if you start playing around with that too much. Again, many of the things in here about um, the, the number of uh, photons per pixel, so sample, but really you mean pixel, uh, I wouldn't really be playing around with too much of these at this stage. Yes, when we get more advanced and we get more used to it, of course, but at this stage, really just leave them where they are. You don't need to worry about them because the computer takes care of everything else. The only other thing that I want to talk about at this stage, as far as the settings are concerned, is over here in the Renderer tab. And we've got a couple of things. Soft Shadow Precision Multiplier. Um, yes, I'd probably you know, want to have that up a little bit higher. Um, obviously, you know, higher you go, the slower things are going to be. Uh, don't really go above a value of 4. The other thing is the sampling quality here. Now, this is anti-aliasing that we're talking about. And for a production render, I would probably have this set to a value of minimum of 1. So we're talking about sampling this at least once per pixel, which yeah, I hope you're doing it at least once, and a maximum of 4. If you have a very fine resolution piece, you might want to go to 16. If you're going above 16 for your maximum number of samples per pixel, Really, quite frankly, you are on your own. I can't help you. Uh, you are going to increase your render time, not just exponentially, but stupidly so. It's going to take a ridiculous length of time. So one on four is good for a production render. The other thing I want to look at over here is filter. Um, really, the only one I'm interested in is Mitchell. The only one I'm ever interested in is in Mitchell. The only one I'm only ever going to be interested in is Mitchell. Stands for Mitchell Netravali is, in my opinion, the best anti-aliasing filter there is available. Uh, a lot of people will say that Catmull ROM is the best filter to use. To be honest with you, the Mitchell and the Catmull ROM use exactly the same filter response curve. They're identical, apart from the fact that Mitchell is not quite as pumped up as Catmull ROM, which means your work won't look as if a three-year-old has gone round the edges with a biro. After that, the only other thing I want to look at is the size of the bucket that we're rendering with, which is the size of the square. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that if you make those buckets huge, it will speed your render up. No, it won't. If you make them smaller, however, what you will get is better contrast between the buckets. So that's something that's worth thinking about. Apart from that, we don't really, at this stage, need to worry about too much. Uh, all we have to do is to press the render button, which I'm not going to do now, uh, and away we go for a nicely optimised image.